Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are going to look at some problems that deal with fractions and mixed numbers in a home links assignment that's entitled Fractions and Mixed Numbers. We're in our home links, Unit 7, Lesson 11, so let's jump right in. It says, solve, draw a picture, or show how you solve the problems. Well, if you look at problems 1 through 4, these should all start to look familiar to you because we've either tackled these in this unit or in units past. So rather than uh, solve some problems as an example, I'm just going to take a moment to remind you how to set up these problems, and then I'll let you do the calculations yourself. So in problem number one, we have 5 times 3 fifths. And when I multiply a whole number by a fraction, the only thing I have to worry about is multiplying the numerator by that whole number, 5 times 3. And once I find the product 5 times 3, that tells me how many fifths I have total. Okay, But then once you have the number of fifths, chances are you're going to have an improper fraction. And when that happens, you're going to want to know how many groups of 5 you can get out of that improper fraction, or how many holes you can get. So once you figure out the product of 5 times 3, you're going to multiply that number by 5, and that will give you your whole number amount. And if there's anything left over in terms of a remainder, that would be a part of a mixed number. Okay? Easy peasy, right? So let's take a look at number 2. Blank equals 4 and 2 sixths minus 2 and 4 sixths. Well, the folks that make these worksheets, they like to see if you're paying attention. They're not trying to trick you. Nobody's trying to trick you here in math. But they do want you to pay attention because there are other people who will give you math tests. Say, oh, I don't know, a uh, standardized test for your state. Uh, they might try to trick you to see if you're paying attention. So this is why everyday math gives you problems like this where they put the answer blank first just to see if you know that if it's part of a, an equation, that means both sides have to be the same. So really, I would just turn this around and say 4 and 2 sixths minus 2 and 4 sixths equals blank. Okay? But since this is a subtraction problem, and there's more than one place value involved, and they wrote it horizontally, I'm going to rewrite this problem vertically. 4 and 2 sixths minus 2 and 4 sixths. And when I write that vertically, as you can see, my numerators show that I'm going to have to do some regrouping because I can't take 4 sixths from 2 sixths. I can't subtract 4 minus 2, so I'm going to have to borrow a whole group of sixths, otherwise known as one whole, from this column right here. A mixed number is a number with more than one place value. It's just that one of the place values exists in a fractional part, okay? So like I said, I'm going to leave you to do the calculations once you know what calculations are needed. Okay, for problem number three, of course, it's an addition problem with mixed numbers, so you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put 5 and 7 eighths on top of 3 and 1 eighths and then add, keeping in mind that you might have to do some regrouping here as well. Then we get to problem number four, 3 times 4 and a fourth. And again, we can use our knowledge of multiplication to help us out here. 4 and 1 fourths times 3. The placement of the, the uh, factors will not affect the product. Okay, And since this is a multiplication problem with a number that has two place values, I can use partial products to help me solve. So I'm going to multiply 4 times 3, and then I'm going to multiply a fourth times 3. And then once I have those two products, I will add them together to get my total product. That's why they call this method the partial products method. Okay? So far, so good. It's all sounding familiar. Okay. Problem number five. The combined weight of an assortment of fruit is eight and three-fourths pounds. When the fruit is on a tray, the tray weighs ten and a fourth pounds. How many pounds does the tray weigh when empty? Okay. 
So again, you're going to use the ruckus strategy to help you solve this problem. You're going to reread this problem. You're going to underline the question, circle the important information, come up with an action plan, and then solve it. Okay. I'll give you a hint on the action plan. It says, how many pounds does the tray weigh when empty? Okay, so with when the fruit is on the tray, the tray weighs 10 and a fourth, but the fruit itself weighs 8 and 3 fourths pounds. So what are you going to have to do to figure out the weight of the tray? Okay. Then finally, problem number six. Now this is one I'm actually going to help you with because I want to show you what this parentheses business means. Okay, you have two sets of multiplication problems inside two pairs of parentheses. And then you have an addition sign. So when we see parentheses, that's usually a clue that says we have more than one operation to deal with, adding and subtracting, or adding and multiplying, or multiplying and dividing, or dividing and adding. Now the parentheses tell us that what's inside the parentheses has to happen first, which means there's an order to the operations that you must perform. Okay, so 3 times 2 and 2 thirds and 2 and 4 and 1 thirds has to be multiplied each by themselves, and then you can add those two products together. Okay, uh, so let's try this out. So 3 times 2 and 2 thirds so I'm going to reverse the order there because 2 and 2 thirds is a number that has more than one place value. And again, I'm going to use the same strategy as I just showed you above. I'm going to multiply 2 times 3. I'm going to multiply 2 thirds times 3. And of course, 2 times 3 is 6. And when I multiply the numerator 2 times the whole number 3, I'm going to get a total of 6 thirds. So when I add those two together, I'm going to get a complete product of 6 and 6 thirds. Now, that number can't stand as is. You can't have a mixed number with an improper fraction. You would have to convert the improper fraction into a mixed number and then add that to the whole number. But I'm going to save you a step because if I'm adding the product of the second set of parentheses, I might get some improper fractions too, and therefore I can just uh, wait on converting because I might have more thirds to deal with. So here I have 2 times 4 and a third, so I'm going to write the same type of problem up top, 2 times 4 and a third. I'm going to break it down, partial product style. I'm going to multiply 4 times 2 and a third times 2. And of course, 4 times 2 gives me 8. 1 third times 2, or I'm multiplying the numerator, it's going to give me 2 thirds. Add those together. And my second complete product is going to be 8 and 2 thirds. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to add... 8 and 2 thirds to 6 and 6 thirds. You see, I saved you an extra step. Now I just have to add these thirds together here and here, and then add my whole numbers together, and then I can deal with that ugly, weirdo number with an improper fraction and a set of whole numbers, and then you know what to do from there. Okay? So, my friends, we have a lot of different problems in this activity that deal with fractions. And again, these are all types of problems you've done before. I've given you the steps. All you have to do now is solve them. It's kind of like reading a cookbook. If I'm uh, following a recipe that gives me the list of ingredients and all the procedures to bake that uh, batch of cookies or prepare that lasagna, I have to commit to doing the actual act of cooking or baking. Uh, the author of that cookbook is not going to come to your house and bake it for you, okay? So you have now been equipped with the tools that you need to solve these problems, so go solve them. Now, if you come to a problem or you get stuck, you can still ask your math teacher for help. Even though, if you're watching this video as a fourth grader, it's probably about 
late March or early April at this point in your school year, you're either about to go into your spring break or come out of your spring break, which means that you maybe have two months of school left before you're done with fourth grade and ready to move on to fifth. Uh, if you still don't know how to do this stuff or you still have questions, now, and I mean right now, is the time to ask questions because when you hit fifth grade, your fifth grade teacher is going to assume that you can do this fourth grade level math. And if you're at a point where you're still confused or still unsure, please ask your math teacher for help. Hey, that's why they're there, to help you. And take advantage of them while you still have access to that fourth grade teacher before you roll into fifth grade next August. Well, you know what, friends? I hope this video was helpful. I am always going to be here on the internet to help you, regardless of what point of the school year it is or whether you're a fourth grader or not. Um, I hope this was helpful. And until we talk again, friends, uh, have a good day and good luck. Thanks.